and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mavis Robinson, and I'm here today with uh, Norm Sylvester and Joe Carrera. Did I get your names right, gentlemen? Sure. Yes. All right. <laughs> um, thank you for coming to the show. Um, we're we, we're going to talk to you both and find out about your experience with Bourne. And, uh, and uh, this should be a pretty interesting interview. So um, so let's just address right now, you're, you're, you're dressed alike. You, you're just good friends. You like to wear the same outfits. Why, what a, <laughs> why the white shirts and the blue pants? Actually, we're both on duty today. We're coming in here. Um, I'm the chief of the Bourne Fire Department, Norm Spanky Sylvester. Okay. Most people know me by my nickname, Spanky. Yeah. And Deputy Chief Carrera, Bourne right. Fire. He handles a lot of public relations and um, public information for the town of Bourne. Okay. So he's my, I hate to say it, right-hand person about <laughs> dealing with media. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's better to have him deal with it because he knows the locals a little better than I do in regards to what they want to know, what they need to know. Yeah, yeah. And well, now you said that he knows the locals better, but you, you grew up in town, right? You grew up in Sagamore Beach? That is correct. Okay. Um, so you, you were born here? Actually, I came from Wareham. Okay. Yep. Parents uh, moved to Sagamore Beach, yep. I'm going to say, in the early 80s. Yep. In doing so, I'm a product of LF Hoxie School. Okay. And Well, and I have to ask, the nickname Spanky, I mean, yes. where, where did that come from? <laughs> um, Spanky McFarlane. Uh -huh. Oh, my, from the Little Rascals. That yep. is correct. Yep. You know, my mother's the oldest of 10 daughters. Wow. And um, my real name's Norman Jr., mm -hmm. and my dad was a local policeman in Wareham. Okay. And the more they called me Spanky, it just stuck. Yeah. He hated the, um, right up to the day he passed, he hated calling me Spanky, but it's one of those nicknames now. If I die tomorrow, Norman Sylvester passed. Nobody no one's going to know. know who that is. Spanky yeah. died. Oh, what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's just, in the fire service, if you have nicknames, that means people usually... Um, understand where you're coming from. We all have nicknames. Yeah, yeah. S some are better than others. <laughs> Joe, what's your nickname? Uh, I don't have one. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't know if that's a good we, thing or a bad gotta, thing. we got to get him a nickname. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, no, but you, you didn't grow up in Bourne, but now you, you um, Spanky said that you're familiar with the locals. How did you... Uh, right, I, um, I was fortunate. My aunt and uncle and my cousin uh, lived on Taylor's Point by Mass Maritime oh, Academy. Okay. So I had exposure through them, and then my parents um, built a summer home around 1986. Yep. So right on uh, Taylor's Point. Correct on okay. Taylor's Point. And then I moved down here while I was in college and um, commuted um, to Bridgewater. So from about 1990 on, so about 26 years I've been a resident I, oh, and wow. I just love the town. It's just, yeah. It's a very special place as I know you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Growing up here myself and recently recently coming back. So 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 you you started in Sagamore but then you must have left if you're not familiar with the locals. Well, what happened was uh, I was a full-time firefighter in Wareham. Mm -hmm. I was here, and I hate to bring this up, during the time when the town took their first big hit when two and a half came in. Yep. Yep. I lost a lot, 16 of the younger firefighters who were personal from, friends. Wow, yes. from where, the Wareham Fire Department? No, from Bourne. Oh, from Bourne. They oh, were wow. all laid off. Yeah. And then yeah. we were talking like we were. When, when was that? Was that back in the, the 90s? or? It was 91. Yeah. Or 1991, okay. right? So in that area. Yeah. yeah 1991. And you were already a firefighter I was full-time in Wareham. Okay. So to lose that many friends yeah. really impacted me. Yeah. So I worked for a fire district. In doing so, I was a young firefighter. I was born in Wareham. Mm -hmm. I loved the local kid, worked there. Were, but I was bored, so I went to Hyannis, okay. which was another fire district, but it was busier. I also wanted to learn the EMS systems. Mm -hmm. I always made a joke when I left Wareham that when I come back, I'm going to have an ambulance in both back pockets. Because, uh -huh. <laughs> and they thought I was kidding until they realized, hey, he's in Bourne. Right, right, right. <laughs> so it was a perfect fit that in the back of my mind, I still to this day is the chief that always sits with me about losing that many guys. Yeah. And it's a great department, but they're still having that void now we're still trying to fill. So you're still recovering from oh, that? Oh, wow. very much so, and people yeah. don't realize it. Yeah. Where we have a very young department, mm -hmm. I got a huge space in between where I would have had time gradually. Right. Where right. then some of the older guys now are at that retirement age. Right, so you're gonna lose, lose people I and, yeah. I yeah. can. So I've been asking some of them to have to stay. Can you give me a year? Yeah. Just so I can groom the newer ones right. so they can learn the job yeah, and be yeah. uh, more proficient at it. Yeah. The deputies, the officers, actually all the five. Everybody in the fire department has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, last how, how long have you been chief? 
Oh, I started uh, last February, a year ago February. Yeah. Um, I think the 28th of February. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so you're... So it's been a little over a year, probably a year and a mm -hmm. half in doing so. Um, I waited a whole year to evaluate the entire department. Yep. It's like everything else coming in. Right. You don't want to make too many changes no. before you get the You need feel. to see what's working, what's yeah. not. Yeah. And now this is the air implementation. Yeah. So we're starting to do some changes to move forward. Mm -hmm. And the department's been very efficient with the number of calls and the people, the personnel we're trying to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. Because like everything else, one of the biggest changes of the town of Bourne is the number of people who are actually making year-round homes. Okay. Yeah. The businesses that are actually coming in for permitting. Right. Um, people don't realize the amount of work that these firefighters and us still have to do now. Yeah, yeah. With inspections, with public education, as well as dealing with medicals and yeah. trying to still deal with the emergencies of the town of. So Bourne. you see, people people are taking summer cottages and saying, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna make this our year-round home." They're seeing an increase in that that type of. Uh... That's one way. Yeah. But they're also looking at we want to downsize. Okay. Right. So right. if you're in the city, if you own a bigger house. Well, you come back here now, you want to retire to the Cape. Yeah, yeah. And Bourne's a perfect community mm -hmm. because there's still a, a lot of homes. Um, there's, it seems like a lot more real estate movement, in my opinion, yeah. from what I'm seeing over the past year. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so I, I think it's interesting, you know, when you say Bourne's a perfect community, and I, you know, I'm recently moving back to Bourne after having been gone for some time, and, and I am really falling in love with the town. But it's that you almost want to keep it a secret, too, you know, because it's part of what's so nice about it is that, you know, we are still small and it has that small feel. So, you know, for you as a young, a young man deciding, you know, you must have been in your early 20s when you said, all right, this is it. I'm going to live in Bourne. How, how, how did you make that decision? What, what was it about? I was dating a girl. Oh, so that'll, that'll do that's it. Kind of, <laughs> that would bring me back and yeah, forth from yeah. college. And, uh, you know, my father, it, it mentioned the police and fire exams and... Uh, and I thank him at least once a week for directing me towards yeah. those professions because yeah. um, it, it's a, a great job. I'm very fortunate. Uh, we work with great people. We make a difference. You know, I, I was thinking we were talking at this conference the other day uh, we alluded to. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you might not see the big, huge fires on the news every day. But every day, our guys go out and somebody might have fallen or they've been in a car accident. And they make a difference in those people's lives every day. Yeah. And, you know, they go home at the end of the day knowing they've made a difference. Um, it's just a, it's a great community to live and work in. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. Uh, and you're close enough to everything. You know, we were at the airport. You can go to Boston. You can go to Providence. Right. Uh, you can go down Cape. Um, and, and I do agree with you. I don't think a lot of people realize um, how great Bourne is. They think of the lower Cape or the middle Cape. And, uh, you know, my best friend relocated from uh, Canton. Uh, his parents now live in Canton. Yeah. I, I, as we, I didn't mention on the show, but being a Canton guy originally going to Canton High and stuff, I'm amazed when I go out on calls and I'll meet people that were originally from Canton or up that way yeah. uh, for retirement. A lot of people like this area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, it does feel like sort of the, I don't know, I think it's the best kept secret on the Cape, but, yeah. but the word's getting out. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, interesting. But, you know, you, you bring up a point with this, with the, uh, the words getting out. I mean, that population is now around... 20,000 people year-round. Right. And then we see that spike where it at least doubles in the summertime. When I, when I first got on the fire department 24 years ago, we were doing like 1,600 emergency calls a year. Mm -hmm. And last year, we were just shy, 73 calls shy of 5,000 calls. Yeah. You know, and the, it's just with an elderly population, the ambulances are going all the time. I yep. mean, we'll break 5,000 calls this year, I believe. And you know, we're doing it still with the same manpower. And the great thing about the town of Bourne, well, one of the great things, the canal, which we all love, really hampers our responses. Oh, right, because you're, yeah, you're, you're, you have to worry about both sides. Right. Yeah. And yeah. traffic, unfortunately, is not just a weekend summertime thing anymore. It's year-round. I mean, right. you see it on Tuesdays, Thursdays. Um, and, so, and now, do you have, are there ambulances on both sides of the bridge? Or are mm -hmm. they, okay, so your, is your, your main station is in Buzzards Bay, is that correct? For now. For now, okay, is that one of the changes that we might see? What's happening is um, July 1st, we'll start rebuilding the Sagamore Station. Yeah. In doing so, we're actually finishing the plans this week about how that'll become the main headquarters station. Oh, okay. It'll become ADA compliant. Yep. Um, 
I know it's a change for a lot of the locals that have gotten used to coming into Buzz's Bay, but we're streamlining a lot of our operations where it's one of the slowest stations of the three that we, we have four stations, but the three man ones 24 seven, yep. it's a little bit slower. Okay. So I'm going to be bringing the deputies with me to the headquarters so they can still continue to do more of the administrative component, Okay. which I need them. Right. That means the two lieutenants now that are working will be assigned to Buzzards Bay and Pocasset okay. with firefighters. So you've got Buzzards Bay, Pocasset, Monument, Monument Beach, Beach, and then, and and then, then the Sagamore. Sagamore. Yep. Right. Yep. So we're reallocating the personnel. We're keeping them, um, moving them around based on the number of people on duty. Yeah. So with that, um, we're still working out some of the logistics. Yeah. You know, what's the better station to put additional equipment in? Um, I listen a lot to... Um, the members who have been here for the amount of time. Yeah. They have to sell it to me. Right. Which is kind of, I hate to say it's kind of cool because if they come with a problem, you better have a solution for me. Yep. Don't just come and complain. Yep. I want to know what your solution is, which is unheard of because it makes it think of both sides. Right, right. And sometimes they're very good at that. Chief, this is what we think. Mm -hmm. Just because I happen to have the fifth bugle and he's got four and I got five, mm -hmm. that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. In other words, we work very well together, all of us. Yeah. And I'm, not, I'm just putting my hands to Joe because yeah. he's to the left of me. Any one of the deputies or officers or firefighters can have the means to approach me yeah, yeah. and talk to me yeah. because they might see something that I don't know. Yep, yep. And I've empowered them a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, and in important. doing so, it makes my job a lot easier. Yep. Um, as the, I say, manager of the department, yep. department head, yep. um, my goal is to make sure that they work in a safe environment, they get the right equipment and tools. But more importantly, they don't forget why we're here. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. We're here for the citizens of the town of Bourne. Yeah. Whether they like it or not, our goal is, is to provide a service to you yep. Yep. as a taxpayer. Yep. And sometimes we lose focus, and that's my job put them back on track. Right. You can get caught up in the day-to-day -day tasks and goals and yeah, you forget right. about the, that big picture. Yeah. And the yeah. big picture is, is life safety and also to make sure that the citizens get what they're paying for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had asked about the ambulance. Yes. Um, all of our personnel are cross-trained. Okay. So, so everybody's an EMT or? Uh, well, or we're very fortunate. Out of 45 full-time people, um, I think the numbers are probably roughly about with the new hires, about 38 are all paramedics. Oh, wow. And the remaining, remaining, my math, what's that? Seven will be EMTs. Mm -hmm. um, our department is, it, we really provide a lot of great services. I yeah. mean, they're paramedic, firefighter based ambulances, three are staffed 24 hours a day. Those same firefighters are staffing the fire engine, so you know, you're getting two for one. Mm -hmm. They also staff the fire boat when there's water emergencies, oh, I didn't um, think about that. hazardous yeah. materials. Yeah. Um, they, they just, they're cross-trained. And when you think of almost any emergency in the town, the fire department's involved in one way or the other, yeah. whether it's EMS, hazmat, fire. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I have to say, you know, um, when you think of fire department, I mean, a fireman, that's one of those jobs that when you're a kid, you could decide to be a policeman or a fireman. Mm -hmm. And, and you think about the, the red, outfit and the red truck and you think you know you think fire and it, i almost feel foolish that it was it didn't even occur to me of course you're the you know the ems um, aspect of it is probably it's equally as important and more used mm -hmm. by uh, by the citizens yeah. so um so we forget you're the you're the ones out rescuing us when when there's a non-fire emergency yeah. as well yeah and you said something where very unique where the firefighters the, are very close with the police officers of the town of Yeah. Board. I have to mention the DPW workers. They've been very good when I need help. Uh -huh. There's certain equipment I don't carry. Yeah. I can't have it all. Yeah. But I pick up the phone and I call the DPW director and I say, hey, I need this. Yep. I get traffic backing up on the bridge because there's an accident at the foot of the bridge. Mm -hmm. I need help. I need this road opened because of the ripple effect. Yeah. Because yeah. this is such a unique situation where an accident on one of the bridges will impact the other bridge right. just like that. Right. Where yeah. it's gonna take hours to clear it up. Yeah. So with that we call the local resources. Instead of waiting for the state and yep. where they have to come out of Taunton or wherever they come from. Yep. I can pick up the phone and call the local DPW. Yeah. People forget them. We don't. Because yeah. they've always, hands down, whenever I needed help, 
been there to assist us. Wow, that's awesome. That's really amazing. And that's the little things yeah. that, as a taxpayer, they don't realize. Yeah. Sanders, dump trucks. I need sand. Yep. I need uh, cones. Yep. So that they can redirect traffic. They can seal roads with barriers. Stuff yeah. that we don't have. Right, right. That sometimes they're utilized. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the big changes where people sometimes don't realize how a lot of the agencies intertwine. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I never that I never would have occurred to me that they would have been an important mm -hmm. uh, part of your strategy. Oh, it's it, yeah. Because I have to look at this, and we made the comment about the canal as two separate towns. Right, right. <laughs> and that's how I have to run this. Yeah, we're yeah. actually managing two separate communities. Yeah, yeah. Because. There could be something going on in Pocasset, Catawba area, yep. and something going on in Sagamore Beach. Right. There could be something at Buzzers Bay. I, we still have to look at the academy. Yep. Because the number of students that are there, the number of visitors who go there to, you know, fish yep. or just look at the water yeah. on the canal, the number of faculty. Right. Okay. We're right. talking yeah, thousands a, of people. That's a concentration of people right there. Yeah. But yeah. that's continuous. It's yeah. not like a constant spread. Then we add in the special events. The Pam Mass, right? The MS. Yep. So when people look at Bourne, everybody says, "Oh, it's just a drive-through community." Okay. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. driving to the Cape. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. But remember, it all goes through this community. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a drive-through. You have to drive through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I could be, see one of the changes we talked about prior to. If I was a local, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get around, and I'm upset because now they're learning all the back roads, right. the secret roads right, that, we right. that, that we used to that. only know. Yeah. <laughs> but with GPS, now everybody's on. Right, yeah, yeah. So those little shortcuts that we had yeah. um, those are gone. Are, yeah, yeah. So. The chief mentioned the uh, inner workings of, of the town departments, and th that is really a, a great thing about this town as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he alluded to the police department and the DPW, which just we do have outstanding relationships with them but I don't think there's a department that you could name that we don't I mean we met last week with the DNR um, yeah. regarding water rescues you know we deal with the schools all the time for fire prevention activities yeah. uh, the Board of Health I mean you could go on and on the Bourne's town departments really work very well together That's nice. and you know sometimes people like to think that government is so over bloated it's not some of these departments are you know, most of them a bare bones. I yeah, mean, yeah. But they they really work well together for the residents. Well, I, I had some experience working in state government in New Hampshire, and I can say I ran into a lot of frustration with with what felt like an overblown bureaucracy. You know that you know so, you know this person had a plow truck that we could use, but we couldn't ask them directly. You had to go up the chain, mm. and so it's actually nice to hear that that Bourne does not suffer from as much of that. Mm. Um, do you, wh why do you think that is? Do you think everybody? sort of like a small town feel, we all have the same goal or? Our goal is to provide the service mm -hmm. to, the com to the community. I also feel that through networking and actually sitting around and having discussions prior to, yeah. you build relationships. Right. Hey, I need help or what do you think? Oh, we're gonna have to do certain inspections. Can you come with us? Let's do it all at once. Yep. Because it's a lot easier to deal with the business owner to have them deal with it once right. instead of doing it four or five different so times. So the health department goes at the same mm -hmm. time that you, oh, right. Or the yeah. electrical or That's somebody brilliant. from the building. This way, it's just easier and faster. Yep, yep. Now, you, if I have a question, hey, I'm not sure if this is a code or a regulatory issue. I'm not sure, and it has to deal with the Board of Health. She's right there. Yeah, yeah. If she's got a fire question, Hey, is this safe, this electrical cord? Is it supposed to be there? Right. No, or yes, it's okay. We can look at the electrical inspector. Yeah. So this is some of the ideas that when I came in, I actually brought with me from the town of Barnstable. Yeah, yeah. We used to have burst teams where we'd go out certain properties that were really bad. Mm -hmm. We'd go as a unit. Mm -hmm. And we'd go there and look because they would be renting to some of the students who came from other countries. And is it safe? Is it, yeah, it, yeah. Our goal is to make sure it's a double-edged sword. We don't make the codes a lot of times, Yeah. but we have to enforce them. Mm -hmm. And people were a little, I'm gonna say, nervous about, well, why are we getting enforced on this now? Yeah. Well, the code is there, codes change, but also our job is to make sure that people that come to Bourne to visit for tourism, to rent, mm -hmm. to a safe, but more importantly, the employees who work for these businesses right. 
are safe. Yeah. But also we're trying to protect the business's investments. Yeah. So yeah. it's a three, I call it three prong approach. Yeah. Yeah. Which is sometimes difficult for Well, I, I love that collaboration with other departments though. That's great. You know, if you've got a business owner that mm -hmm. needs, you know, three or four inspections, getting them, you know, mm -hmm. even overlapping two of them would save time. Right. You know, you could turn a four week process into a two week process and mm -hmm. get up and running sooner. Yeah. So. I'm very pro business, he'll tell you. Yeah. Um, you know, very pro business. And that's the high part. Yeah. Sometimes it's not me, but I'll show you in the code or what we have to do or why. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is to protect you later down yeah. the road. Yeah. You know, you mentioned something um, we were, were ch chatting earlier before uh, the show about how sometimes when you live in an area, it can be hard to see the changes that occur over a period of time. But when you leave and come back, it's easier to see what has changed. Just from a personal perspective, what do you what do you see? What, what do you see some of the biggest changes in Bourne that have been since you first lived here as a kid to now? Driving in here to do this program today. Yeah. Looking out at the Cody School. Oh right, I know. Enough said. Yeah. yeah. The plans, you know, I got 80 pounds of paper for the new development they're putting in. Yeah. I remember that school because my sisters used to go there. I used to go there and, um, you know, when they were playing sports. Yeah. Um, that's the one like. You know, it's kind of interesting because Joe's dad and my dad knew each other. Oh, really? So it's little things like that yeah, where yeah. Um, growing up, watching how the community building changed. Yep. From the old building yep. to the one that's now. Yeah, yeah. Hoxie School. I went to school there. We talked about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, know. and there's interesting things going on over there. They're renovating it and yeah, right. redefining what it is. So that's little things. Yep. But now being part of this new school. I say old school, new yeah. um, condo, assisted living, is going to be huge. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's just one. Yeah. Looking at w the new police station, looking at listening about, you know, what they need for this community. Yep, yep. You know, that's the hard, that's the interesting part. Yeah. Being able to be part of it. We made the joke about, for some of you, let me look at the camera. The old skating <laughs> rink. The old skating <laughs> rink. Well, actually, but that, that's a great one because, you know, I, I've, I've spoken to other people um, of previous generations and they sort of are nostalgic for things that were gone by the time I was a teenager. But I'm nostalgic for that skating <laughs> rink and for Funland USA with the mm -hmm. go-kart track. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I miss that stuff. Right. <laughs> right. We, we're talking about this because, you know, him and I are part of the hazmat team. Yeah. So we're driving up through Hull, and he's like, did you ever go to Paragon Park? Paragon Park, right. So he's yeah. telling me, do you never went? I said, no, I used we to go to it. Lincoln Park. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff where you sit back and you look at the community. Yeah. But yeah. then you got, I'd say, the old staples that are still here. And one of them's Betty Ann's. Betty Ann's ice cream. <laughs> yeah, my sister worked there. In the, so, the, see, golf, the mini golf is yes. gone though. Yeah. But Betty Ann's is still a staple. Yes, yes, <laughs> I know. Yeah. So. Yeah, that movie theater kills me. I wish that I, you know, I remember seeing, uh, you know, all the the uh, what are they mm -hmm. called? The Raiders of the Lost Ark right. there, and mm -hmm. the second Star Wars, and you know, to have that gone. Is, but uh, <laughs> with time, I'm an advocate, and he's a very pro. Buzzers Bay will be built up. Yeah, yeah. It takes time. Sometimes we got to go backwards to move forwards, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening. Yep. We're at that critical point where, okay, let's think about how we want to revitalize this area. Yeah. Listen, we talked about being in Baltimore, the waterways. Yep. Um, part of the training. Okay. We mm -hmm. see things while we're out. Hey, that would be a pretty cool idea. Yeah. You know, I made a comment and he flinched. Let's think about flip flopping. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that put the park on the inside of the where the and put the buildings along the outside rim so that they can overlook the water. Right, right. So build right. it backwards. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's things like that because yep. they're like nobody's made thought of it, but when you see other parts of the country Yeah. And you say, you know, they're on the waterfront, they have the same issues we do. Right. Yeah, they don't have the canal where you can have water taxis, but <laughs> Yeah. No, but it, it feels it does feel like a mystery and you know, your Taylor's point presence there. Buzzards Bay feels like it should be as bustling as the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, oh, or even downtown Falmouth. You know, it's it's there's, it's unbelievable there's so the, much um, the potential. The potential, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I could envision restaurants overlooking that. Yep. Um, hotels, which there's some discussion over that. I'm involved. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be involved in the 
uh, redesign a Buzzards Bay Park, and that and that's something exciting. Yep. But when I think of, I mean, we're right on the canal, and even the Borndale section, uh, we have that canal, and it's just, um, it's unbelievable to think what we have, and. I take for granted, I drive over the bridge several times a day, mm -hmm. and people come from all over to run or fish yep. along the canal. Yep. And yeah, people will, will wait their whole lives to have, you know, or, or their whole year to have a one week yeah. on, on the Cape or in Bourne that they can walk on the canal, and we've got it every day if right. we want it. Yeah, right. yeah. So we just have to find more ways to invite people there to come and stay. And, yeah. You know, there's this talk of the MBTA, I don't know where that is, but there was the recent talk of that. I mean. There is so much potential, I think, for Buzzards Bay. And, and when I drive down there, there's businesses that are renovating and, yep. and fixing up their storefronts, and, and I think they're investing in the community when they do that, and we just need to make sure it's along that entire one-mile stretch. Yeah, yeah. Know. Yeah, I, 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 hope to, I hope to see that, you know, in, in my, my near future. Because right. it seems like, uh, you know, I was just in Falmouth the other day with my mom at a little cafe, and I'm thinking, why can't I be on Main Street Buzzards Bay doing this? Because, right, right. uh, you know, everything we need is there. That is correct. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. <sighs> what, I, what I like best is one is changing. Yeah. Some parts will change slower than others, yep. which is perfectly fine. I have no qualms with that. If they keep certain parts of the town the way it was when I was growing up, you know, perfect. Yep. The little villages, I like it. The, you know, I'll use Sagamore Beach, that area. You use Katomit if you start, but it, if they allow the other areas to grow where mm -hmm. they need to, mm -hmm. I'll use MacArthur Boulevard, Buzzard Space Center. Yep. They have to open it up a little bit so that we can move forward so that everybody's not getting hammered for the tax base, right. the homeowner. Right, right, right. You know, and we're seeing it. Yeah. A lot of the buildings in the industrial park now are being converted or uh, renovated or they're adding buildings. Yeah, along MacArthur Boulevard? In, on the inside. Like yeah. Inside. Yeah. Uh, like Hydroids expanding. Yes. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. great that they stayed as an employer. Now they're building another yep. um, building there. Right. Yeah. They were, yeah. So that means they'll probably bring more employees in, which will probably stay in the area. Right. It's stuff like that. that um, yeah, and those are two different ideas. You mentioned the MBTA. You know, one is to make Bourne easier to leave, to get somewhere else to work. But another, you know, you know, great way is to make Bourne friendly to business, so that there's actually more jobs in town. Because that's definitely, you know, the challenge that we've always had is, you know, yeah. year-round employment. You know, that's not, you know, working at a restaurant or landscaping or something like that, yeah. which is seasonal. So. Oh, once I get to Bourne, I want to leave Boston for the weekend. Mm -hmm. They're already going to Hyannis. Mm -hmm. In doing so, they have the capability. Well, why keep going? Yeah. We're going to stay in Buzzers Bay. We'll spend a half a day here. We'll walk to the canal. We'll do some sightseeing. Okay. And then we'll continue on or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So give them something to stay in the community to be here. Yep. Yep. And I think that's where we're heading. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we talked about the MBTA as a small component. What I don't want is, and this is just me being me, now being selfish. <laughs> don't ask me a question if you don't want to know the answer. <laughs> don't let this become a parking lot. Right, right. Don't let this yeah. become, I hate to say it, like a lake fill. Right. Where the people just park their cars and leave. Yeah, yeah, and then just drive home. Right. Yeah, and it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, we're, that, we're just losing, yeah, yeah. That's all. Yeah. There was yeah. a summer I can remember. I was probably, well, I didn't have my license, so I was probably 15 or 16, but they were doing um, ferries from Mass Maritime oh. to uh, Martha's Vineyard. Oh, wow. And I thought that yeah. was a great thing. You know, we took our bikes over a couple of kids and stuff, but uh, yeah, yeah. I just, there's so much potential for yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. You know, hopefully yeah. we see it sooner rather than later. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to thank you both for, for coming in and, uh, and talking with us today. And, uh, and really, I love the unique, unique perspe perspective of the, uh, the, uh, the past and the present. And thanks for your service to the town. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. thank you for joining us today as we took this glimpse through the window to Bourne's past. <laughs>